Thank you for showing this nice uh, video before my presentation. I hope you, in the end, will understand why this is relevant for my talk. Um, I will talk to you about seeds, I will talk to you about food, and uh, about this place. This is a place where I work. This is the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. It's actually, in general, a large freezer for uh, frozen seeds. It's located in uh, the archipelago of uh, Svalbard, half the way to the North Pole from the Norwegian north coast. And why am I so uh, amazed by seeds? This is uh, a group of different seeds. You see them in different colors, different shapes, different forms. Most crop Crops produce seeds, making them available for uh, agriculture, making them able to spread, making them able to survive from one year to the next. And uh, seeds can be stored. We mostly eat seeds, if you think it after. If, uh, seeds actually made us able to produce large-scale food. Seeds made it possible for us to settle as sedentary farmers about 10,000 years ago. And the most important thing about seeds is that seeds are the perfect storage for DNA, for genetic codes, for how a plant should look like, which traits a plant should have. And in principle, every seed is a unique genetic combination. Having new options for cultivation and producing food and adapting to nature and so on. So why is this so important? Have a look at this uh, brassica plant. This is a wild cabbage plant. You can find it uh, among cliffs and rocks here in Italy and around the Mediterranean Sea. And if you don't know it, you would never imagine that the genes for making and developing the vegetables, cabbage and cabbage-related vegetables, actually are within these wild cabbage plants. Farmers, thousands of years ago, they discovered new genotypes of this wild brassica, wild cabbage. They produced it, they cultivated it, and slowly they discovered new genotypes, slightly better, slightly more yielding, more tasty than the genotypes they produced last year. And slowly they developed what we today call land races. That's farmers' varieties. Crop plants developed from wild plants by farmers through thousands of years. <coughs> uh, our bread wheat has a quite similar story. Bread wheat is a natural cross between wild emmer wheat and goat grass. And actually, about 10,000 years ago, some farmers discovered this new plant in their fields in the Middle East. They immediately saw that this was a new, very nice plant, giving more yield. And they took care of the seeds, sowed the seeds the next spring, and very slowly, they developed new crop plants, land races, and the bread wheat that we have today and that feed billions of people. I was brought up on a farm, and this is actually me. And uh, it's my father, probably trying to tell me something about agriculture and food production. Uh, my father and his grandfathers before him produced a large diversity of crops. Potatoes, vegetables, fruit and berries. In principle, we were self-sufficient of food. He also produced cereals. And what was important at that time, he did not buy his seeds in the seed store. No, he kept a part of his harvest from the last year, stored it through the winter, and sowed it the next spring. And by this way, our farm 
a village, a group of farms, they developed very slowly their own land races of seeds. And there were thousands of these seeds. But from about 1970, uh, the farmers, including my father, started to buy seeds in the seed store. He stopped using what we could call the Astal barley land race and started to buy seeds in the seed shop produced by modern plant breeders. These varieties gave higher yields, they were more healthy, gave more food, more income, so it was obvious that my father should do this. But what happened with this old Astal barley land race? Yes, it disappeared. And the traits in this barley genotype also disappeared. And so did thousands and perhaps millions of uh, land races all over the world. Genetic combinations, locally adapted traits to crops, they disappeared. But not all of these valuable, I would say, uh, genotypes disappeared. Thanks to some foresighted scientists, some of them are conserved in what we call gene banks. This is what we could consider to be the pioneer of the gene bank movement in the world. It's Nikolai Vavilov. He was a scientist from Russia. He traveled all around the world, collected seeds, because he understood that genes, a diversity of food, diversity of seed, diversity of genotypes, was the resources that was needed for improving agriculture to fight hunger. And he founded the first gene bank in the world in St. Petersburg, which is still operating. And many other countries established gene banks after that. Vavilov's achievement became quite personal to me some years ago. Uh, from former times I've heard about a local land race called Messel Wheat. It was named after the Messel farm, not far away from where I live now. And this man, Igor Loskuto, who is in charge of the cereal collection in St. Petersburg, he showed me a list of seed material that Vavilov and his colleagues had collected in the Nordic countries. And on this list, there was a pouch, seed pouch, marked Messel 1923. And I immediately understood this is actually the missing Messel wheat, survived in a Russian gene bank for almost 100 years. And to make a great story short, we received one pouch of this um, wheat from St. Petersburg. We were able to grow 10 seeds germinated, and I was able to visit today's owner of this Messel farm and show him one spike of this barley that was, excuse me, wheat that was uh, used by his grandfather about 100 years ago. The gene bank in St. Petersburg was threatened by war during the Second World War. But thanks to heroic efforts by Vavilov and his scientists, the gene bank survived, the seeds survived. And war and conflicts are still among the main threats to gene banks. Uh, flooding, natural disasters, as we just saw, and just mismanagement, lack of resources, cause many gene banks to lose their seeds. Luckily, this is a, a picture from the Ikara headquarter and gene bank located in Aleppo, in Syria. Luckily, uh, the gene bank in Aleppo had deposited copies of their seed in the Svalbard seed vault. And uh, when uh, the war in Syria made it impossible to run a normal gene bank there, uh, they decided to withdraw the seeds in the seed vault 
use them to establish new Jindan collections in Morocco and in Lebanon. And this uh, man from Ikada assisted me in Svalbard in September 2015, and together we brought out the first 38,000 samples of seeds, sent them back to new gene bank units in Morocco and in Lebanon. And it was an, a very emotional moment when Thanos reported, this is fantastic, all seeds germinated, and we will soon be able to run a normal gene bank again. And we will send new copies to Svalbard and to the seed vault. And these are the figures from the opening in 2008 until 2014. Icarda deposited 116,000 <coughs> seed samples. During three years, they have withdrawn 92,000 samples, and so far they have produced new seeds and sent 42,000 samples back to the seed vault. Today, 76 gene banks from all over the world have deposited seeds in the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. These are copies of the seeds they have in their own gene banks. The idea of depositing seeds and uh, copies of security samples of seeds in permafrost in Svalbard became evident during the 1980s. The Nordic seed collection were copied in an old coal mine. Svalbard is a coal mining community, and there are a lot of coal mines there. And the copies were placed in this coal mine. And this uh, solution for securing seeds uh, gained a lot of international attention. And again, to make a, a great story short, Norway decided, after international support and encouragement, Norway decided to build the seed vault, and it was opened in 2008. And despite being a very modest Norwegian, I must say that this is a wonderful gift to the world. All gene banks making their seeds and genetic resources available for plant breeding and research are invited to free of charge place copies of the seeds in the seed vault. We guarantee the security for the seeds. We do not open the seed boxes. It's like a bank box. Uh, the seeds remain the property of the gene bank that sent the seeds. Uh, and we send the seeds back to the gene bank whenever they, need, they might need it. So far, only one. Thank you. Today, the seed vault is managed through a cooperation between the Norwegian government, the international organization, Crop Trust, and the Nordic Genetic Resource Center, where I work. And in addition to conserved seeds, the seed vault has become a kind of iconic symbol of the importance of taking care of genetic resources and the importance of allocating money, resources, to plant breeding, to plant um, research. And it's my job to take care of the seeds, but also to inform about the mission and about the need for taking care of these resources. So in summary, why do gene bank take care of these seeds? Yes, it's because we know that we will need more food in the future. We know that we face climate change. We know that we face maybe unfavorable cultivation conditions, more flooding, droughts, new plant diseases. So these genetic resources, they are the key, the raw material that scientists and plant breeders need for uh, making new plant varieties needed for dealing with this challenge in the future. And secondly, we place seeds in the seed vault 
because we know that the gene bank's resources are vulnerable when they are stored only in one place, so we bring copies in the seed vault. In the seed vault, there is minus 18 degrees, which is the same method that gene banks use for conserving seeds. Dried seeds, when they are frozen, they can stay alive for decades, maybe centuries. So, so far, 76 gene banks, as I said, have deposited more than one million seed samples in the seed vault. And we should prepare, be prepared that more gene banks would need to have their seeds back because we are living in a vulnerable world and keeping the seeds in the seed vault gives us extra security for this valuable genetic resource. So what we could do is to encourage people, researchers, governments to allocate resources, conserve their genetic resources and send copies to the seed vault. Thank you.